something called JDBC, which stands for Java Database Connectivity. It's essentially an API that's used to interact with a database right from your Java code. So in other words, you know, it's, it's a set of built-in Java libraries that are part of the Java language. So you, know, you can use that code to communicate with a uh, relational database. The database could be running locally on the same machine where your Java application is running, or that database could be on some remote server somewhere. The process of connecting to it from the Java application is going to be the same. So we'll be going over how to connect your Java application to a database uh, that we install on the computer. And by the way, this is a Java course, so I won't go off track talking too much about databases. I've actually already created an entire database course that's available on Udemy as well as on my website, jobreadyprogrammer.com. So if you're interested in becoming a pro database developer, you can take that course uh, that's titled uh, the Complete Oracle SQL Certification Course. But in this Java course, we'll just download a database and I'll show you how to uh, use the JDBC API to communicate with that database. Now there are several database vendors out there, such as Microsoft, IBM, Oracle, and many other companies. Who knows what vendor the government is using, uh, what, you know, which database company the, the, the government is using. But each of these companies have created their own databases. Regardless of the vendor, the databases pretty much work the same way. A language known as SQL, or SQL, is used to manage data in all of these databases. So if you, if you want to learn that SQL language, you can take my other course that I mentioned earlier. That language, if you know it, you can work with pretty much any database out there, regardless of the vendor. Now this slide explains how a Java application can work with a database. The JDBC libraries are part of the Java language, and you know we can use that Java code to talk to a database. But we need a middleman. Right? And that middleman is known as a vendor uh, driver software. Okay? Um, as I mentioned, there are many database vendors out there, such as Microsoft, Oracle, IBM, and you know, several others. Each of these vendors provide driver software so that Java developers can communicate with that, with that specific database. Right? And you can't do that directly. You need to go through this database driver. And uh, you can download this database driver from these different websites, uh, from the Microsoft website, from the Oracle website, or from the IBM website. Any database vendor should provide a driver. And from a developing standpoint, all we have to do is add that driver to the class path of our Java application, and we can connect with that vendor-specific database. So if we want our Java application to connect to a Microsoft database, we'd have to add their specific driver to the class path of our application. But remember, we can't use that driver for any other vendor, right? In other words, the database driver uh, I downloaded from Microsoft website, I can't use that to connect to an Oracle or an IBM database. So in this course, we'll actually be using a MySQL uh, database. So I'll show you how to download the database and run it on our computer. And then before we can write any Java code, uh, to connect to that database, we'll need to also get the specific driver uh, that works with MySQL. So let's get started. Now here we are on the MySQL website. If you go to dev.mysql.com slash downloads, it'll take you to the downloads page where you're going to have all the software you need. So the first thing right here, the first link, is the actual database software that we're going to be downloading. And uh, if you scroll down to the bottom, um, we're going to also need the driver. And that's this guy right here, this MySQL connector. Um, so you can download the connectors from this link. And we're going to do that in just a second. This is the driver that we need uh, to connect our job application to the database. And then right above it, this is uh, the MySQL Workbench application. And this is just a visual uh, design application. So similar to how you type Java in Eclipse, 
this is a place where you can type in SQL, the database language, and uh, interact with the database. So similar to Eclipse, this is just an IDE for working with the MySQL database. So we're gonna we're gonna install this as well. So three things. Let's first start with the uh, database software, which is right here on the top. Let's click there, and then scroll down. And notice it already detected that I'm using a Mac OS operating system. Since this is a 64-bit machine, I'm going to get the DMG file right here. If you're using Windows, you can choose your operating system. It has pretty much all of them. So for Windows, you'd have, of course have to select that option. So for the Mac, I'm just going to select this first download, which is the DMG file. Let's download that. And here it's asking us to sign up or log in. Since this is an open source uh, database, we don't need to do that necessarily. Just click on this no thanks, just start my download. So let's click that and the download will begin. So now I have to save uh, this database on my computer. So I'm just going to save it in my home directory in MT as a mod. I'm just going to save it right there, hit save. And in just a couple minutes, this download should be complete. So while that's downloading, let me go back to that download page. Uh, go back one more time, and this is the community, community downloads page. Let's scroll down to where we had the connector. So this is the database driver software, right? The vendor driver for MySQL. And I'm going to download it right here. Just click on download. And this third option right here, connector slash J. Notice it says standardized database driver for Java platforms and development. So that's the thing we need. I'm going to click on that and then scroll down and notice it's saying it's platform independent. doesn't matter which platform you are using, you can still use this driver for your Java application. And you can choose to get a zip file or a tar.gz file. Uh, I'm just going to go with the first option here and just hit download. And you don't need to sign up or log in. Uh, let's just click on no thanks to start my download. And I'm going to download it in the same place where I downloaded the other database software. So let's just hit save. So that should be pretty quick because it's a small compressed file. So now let's go back. There's one more software that I want to download. Let's go back one more time. Back one more time. And this is the thing. MySQL Workbench. This is that IDE that you can use to, you know, see the data in your database and, you know, uh, type SQL commands to interact with that data. So I'm just going to click on this download link and scroll down to where you see the Mac OS it detected our operating system. If you're using Windows, of course, you're going to have to change that. And then this is the DMG file that we need. So I'm just going to download this as well. And we don't need to sign up. Let's just click on no thanks, start my download. And it's going to be uh, going to the same place where I installed the other, where I downloaded the other software. So let's just hit save. And in just a minute or two, the MySQL workbench should also be completed. So we got the database, we've got the driver, and we also got this handy uh, UI, you know, IDE that you can use to interact with that database, just so you can see the data. So now that we have the software downloaded, let's install it on this machine. And that's this guy right here. Uh, click on this show in Finder, and it'll take me to the place where it downloaded this MySQL 5.7.19. Uh, so let's just double click it and by the time you're watching this there may be a newer version the instructions should pretty much be the same and this is the the file that I want to double click on so that it can start installing the MySQL database on this machine so let's hit continue continue and just agree to that those terms and conditions and now just accept that and click on install and it asks us for our administrator password I'm just gonna type in that information right here and now it has begun installing so there we go the installation is pretty much complete and notice it gave me a sign uh, or uh, a window here saying that the temporary password is generated for root at localhost so just save this password um, you know somewhere make sure you have this if you don't uh, you'll have trouble okay you may have to uninstall this application and start it again so save this password somewhere I'm just gonna copy it and paste it somewhere so that I have it and just hit OK and you can close this so the next thing I'm gonna need is that driver 
that we downloaded. So let's open that up, click it on, uh, fi find it in your file system. Um, for me, it's right here in my home directory, MT as a mod. So I'm just going to double click it, and in, in the Mac OS, it's going to extract that driver. So if you double click this folder, this is that guy. Okay. Notice it's saying MySQL dash connector dash Java. It's a Java driver. And notice it ends with a dot jar. So it's a dot jar file. So very important. This is the file that we're going to be adding in our Java project to communicate with the MySQL database that we installed. And this file, note where it is on your machine. For me, it's uh, installed in my home directory, um, MT as a mod, and it's in this folder right here. Okay, this is where that jar file is. I may need to get to it later. And finally, the MySQL workbench, uh, which is right here. This is that IDE that we can use to visualize our data. Uh, so I'm just going to double click it to start the installation for this application as well. So again, this is similar to Eclipse. Uh, this is used to program for the database. Just like Eclipse is used for Java programming, MySQL Workbench is used for programming in a database using the SQL language. So I'm just going to double click this application and it's saying I could drag this application to the applications folder. So I'm just going to drag it and save it in my applications. And notice it's copying that MySQL Workbench to my applications folder. Now the instructions for getting this database on your machine may be uh, you know, slightly different uh, if you're a Windows user, if you're uh, a Ubuntu or some other operating system user, but it'll just be a slight difference. As you can see, it's not hard to download these applications and install them. So this is just a warning sign. This is an application that we downloaded from the internet. It's asking, do you want to open it? I'm just going to click on open. And there you go. This is that application. So I can connect to, to that database through this application. Okay. Uh, so the way I do that is I click on this plus sign and I provide the connection details. So this local host, um, this is the IP address for this, for any application that's running on this computer and the port, these things are not going to change and I can give this connection a name. But before I connect to the database, the database application should be running on our machine, right? This is just an IDE, right? This is just an IDE to connect to the database. That database better be running on my machine already. So to start the MySQL database server on this computer, you'd have to go to system preferences. So if you go to this uh, Apple icon on the top, I don't know if you can see it, but if you're a Mac user, you'll be able to see it. Uh, you go to the system preferences option, and then you'll see the MySQL server, right? This is the icon that I'm talking about right here, MySQL. So click that and notice that it says the MySQL server instance is stopped, right? That's how it comes by default. So to start the MySQL server, we have to click on this start MySQL server button, okay? And uh, notice that it, there's an option here. It says automatically start MySQL server on startup. So when you log out of this computer and you log back in, it'll automatically start this MySQL server in the background. You can leave this option checked if you please. I'm going to leave it checked for now so that when I log off, log back in, this, inst this server instance will be running. But anyway, let's click on this Start MySQL Server. And we need to provide the administrator password. And this is the password you use to log into your computer, not that root password that we saved earlier. So this is just going to be your user password. Hit OK. And there you go. Notice the status has changed to running. So let's close this. And now using this IDE, I can connect to the MySQL database. So click on this plus sign. The database is running. The port is going to be the same. The, the host name is going to be the same as a local IP address. And uh, the connection name, I'm just going to name this as a default connection. Uh, you can give it any name that you'd like. And the, the username is root. And just click on test connection. It's going to ask us for that password. So that password I saved off screen here. I'm just going to copy it and paste it here. Hopefully you saved your password when you were installing it. And just hit paste. And I'm going to hit OK. 
And notice it says fail to connect to MySQL at the following uh, IP address user root. Notice it's saying you must reset your password using alter user statement before executing this. So we'll, we'll leave that as it is. We won't test this connection for now. I'm just going to click on OK. And let's just double click this default connection. And uh, notice it, it wants that password here, old password. Uh, so I'm just going to enter that password that MySQL generated for us and provide a new one. So here is where I get to choose the password that I uh, need to connect to the database moving forward. So I'm just going to call it password123. Okay. And you can feel free to use the same one. I'm just going to type that again, password123. And just hit enter and that should save those settings to connect to the root user um, and then i'm going to enter that password again here to log in password one two three and just hit okay and now it's going to open the ide that we can use to communicate with this database server now the database is running at this time right we started that database server on this computer and now we can use this MySQL Workbench to communicate with that database. So we should be ready to rock and roll uh, for the remainder of this section. I gave you an overview of the JDBC. We went over how to download and install these applications on the Mac operating system. Doing the same on Windows will be much easier actually. Uh, so if you're a Windows user, this stuff should be straightforward. If you have a little bit of trouble, uh, you know, Google uh, how to do that on your operating system. It shouldn't be very problematic at all. All right, so let me wrap up this lecture. This lecture was more about setting up the environment and giving you an overview of JDBC. We haven't actually done any JDBC programming yet. That happens in Java when we uh, write the Java program to communicate with the database. But I wanted to set the environment up for you so that you can, you know, work with the database as you write Java code. And that's what this lecture was about. So let's wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lecture.